It's an old. You're in the sports lounge. And now, you're tuned into Tampa Bay's RBLR Sports. You are listening to this on a wonderful Sunday morning, but we're kind of cheating here. We are we are recording this on a Saturday, but in the future, five hours in the future, I believe, from us is Mr. Pat Davenport, who is our special guest. Uh, we'll start. We'll do this a little differently. Let's introduce you first before we talk about ourselves. Mr. Davenport, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Excited to be on. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen me before, uh, I'm Pat. Nice to meet you. And uh, I am the resident raise writer for RBLS, RBLR Sports. So what I do is I write all things raise, uh, tell you about what's going on, try and dive a bit deeper into, into some topics around the raise world that uh, hopefully no one else is talking about yet. So that's yeah. that's what I'm here for. But you a very interesting person with a very interesting story. We will get to that in a second. And to help myself do that is, of course, my tag team partner, my ace, my guy. That is Chris Glazier. What's good, buddy? It's a good weekend to be a tag team partner, man. This is this is a great weekend we got ahead here, man. All in has finally arrived. Talking 80 plus K people, man. I, I am hyped this weekend. I'm feeling good. I'm going to ask you, Eureka, how are you doing today, man? Yes, sir. I am Eureka Wheeler. I will be your other co-host here with the hot tag. Um, I'm doing good, man. And it's it's exciting because I think all three of us have been waiting for this moment. And like every we'll get into a lot of wrestling talk towards the end of the show here as we talk about a monumental historic show in that will that is literally one, uh, the biggest paid wow. attendance in pro wrestling history for all elite wrestling's uh awesome uh uk awesome. uh debut i believe i don't think i've done yes. every anything in the in the not UK. a single thing and you know they're just doing it at a little 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 park called wembley stadium so it, it's gonna be, <laughs> gonna be interesting um but before we get to that the our main our main event is going to be kind of getting to know pat a little bit more uh again if you if you haven't read any of his his work uh on rblrsports.com every uh, most weeks anyway we we have a, a nice feature article going in depth into a topic that might not be on the top of the mind of everybody and it, it's been eye opening it's been a, a good experience to learn about you know a, a few different ways that the rays could have gone and and you brought up some interesting points before the trade deadline and you talk about a guy that uh, that, that the Rays have experimented with and uh, have kind of created a, a brand new tool for them to use in Zach Littell. So uh, there's a link in the description right now to go click that and, and read that article. Um, but uh, I guess uh, bef getting away from the, the ballpark, getting away from, from the mound and everything like that, let's get to know. So Pat, like, uh, are, are you from the Tampa Bay area? Like why, why do you, why does a person all the way over in England uh, even care about the Tampa Bay Rays? Yeah, so no, um, you could probably tell from my uh, from my accent that I am not from the Tampa area, nor <laughs> the entire United States of America. I'm I'm over across the pond in in England, and it's uh, it's a weird experience being uh, a British baseball fan. Uh, because there's already a dominant bat and ball sport uh, in cricket that has kind of been far more in the in the culture. But uh, how did I become a baseball fan? It's um, it's a uh, it's an interesting story. I mean, my dad used to work over in in the U.S. He visited Boston and he visited Baltimore a few times, and he is a, in fact a Red Sox fan, much to my chagrin i'm not i'm not happy about it yeah. i tolerate it more than anything <laughs> because <laughs> we've had some unfortunate run-ins in the reds with the red Sox in the in the postseason um but we've had a couple of triumphs over them too so that that's always a fun uh sit in the living room uh but i became a Rays fan because uh my first experience was the 2009 world series where we watched the yankees and the phillies play uh, and I was under strict instructions, just just root against the Yankees, uh, and that is an <laughs> instruction I've followed ever since. And um, 
since then, uh, I was going to follow baseball proper. Uh, and the way I got into that was I, I bought MLB The Show on my PlayStation. Okay. And I was like, what a better way to learn the league than to get the yeah. video game. So all the all the teams are there, so I got to scroll through each team, look at all the all the players on the team, uh, and I was scrolling through trying to figure out who was I gonna put my attachment onto. And I noticed Tampa Bay had a team, and I once went on a on a vacation to Tampa Bay. I uh, went to Busch Gardens, went to Disney World, you know, the typical tourist vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I know Tampa Bay. Um, so I decided to start playing as the Rays. And then um, I went on MLB TV because we don't have blackout restrictions over here in the UK. We can just watch whatever team. So I, I watched the Rays and the 2010 season was my first season of following the Rays. So I was slightly late to the Rays, a really good party, but I thankfully <laughs> skipped the, the terrible Devil Rays years, which sounded like a, a tough time. Um so 2010, I watched the Rays be really good. And then I really clung on to the Rays in that 2011 season, mm. that big comeback to the game 162. Um, Evan Longoria walk-off home run was my first real uh, embedded baseball memory where it had an emotional impact on me. And I let the Rays kind of take over my life ever since. I remember game 162 because... It was a school night, and um, over in the UK, the game started at midnight. So I had to go to bed. <laughs> I went to bed at about 6 p.m., woke up at midnight, and stayed up till 5 a.m. because that was a long game. It went to extra innings. The Red Sox were in rain delay. It was a whole thing, but I was running laps around my sofa at five in the morning <laughs> when Evan Longoria hit that home run. I was about 14 then, and uh, I'm 26 now. So it's been, a, it's been a wacky ride, but that's the long story of how I got to follow the race. That's awesome because that's a that was that's such a huge moment in, in Tampa Bay Rays history. You know, it's like I'll never forget where I was when I watched that that game and that play and the big hit. And it's like, it's just one of those memories that's definitely embedded in my head. And I know a lot of Tampa fans will remember where they were when they saw that. So maybe talk to me a little bit about the, the fandom over there. You know, are there other race fans? Um, do you go to, is there any watch parties, any kind of bars? How is, how is baseball maybe presented over there? Uh, uh, you know, for, yeah. for, for you. So it's, it's growing. It is actually growing from when I first got into baseball. When I first got into baseball, it was, impossible to find another <laughs> baseball fan um but twitter has been a big a big okay. part of finding a british uh sphere there's a there's quite a popular account called baseball brit uh he became popular by uh, going to uh, touring around all 30 mlb stadiums okay um coming from the uk and he started doing a lot of work of trying to unite british baseball fans uh online together so he he got people to create the Tampa Bay Rays UK um, Twitter account, which has thousands of followers. So apparently okay. they do exist and there's um, a growing culture in the UK, as we've seen from the, the London series. Uh, there's some podcasts that are starting to gain um, a lot of notoriety around the baseball world. Batflips and Nerds is probably the most popular British baseball podcast that kind of cover MLB, but also try to give a lot of coverage to the now growing British Baseball League, which is starting to grow around the UK as well. It's still, I think, in its infancy of development. Um, I have yet to meet a Rays fan in the flesh in the okay. UK. Um, but I have had several conversations online with a good few. There are definitely people in the race sphere that um, I have managed to have several conversations with and befriend because of because of Twitter. There are watch parties though. Um, there's a bar in London that is baseball themed that have watch alongs usually during the playoffs or the All Star Game or big series like Yankees versus Red Sox, um, and of course the London series as well is a good congregation point for all the all the British fans, which has been awesome to see. And it's it's been great to kind of see the growing community around baseball for sure. And uh, hopefully it continues to grow. For um, sure. So, yeah, um, 
Still growing, but we're getting there. I ran into a, someone in a bar in Manchester just yesterday that had the Astros game on. So, yeah, we're getting there. I'm uh, I'm having the wheels are turning in my head about getting a, a raise. Watch, you say the word watch party. That's like my that's my thing right now. Is we're putting on a lot. We're trying to do watch parties here in the Bay. But like, oh man, if we had a mega event where we had a handful of people in. Uh, Manchester and <laughs> maybe, and, a, we, and a handful of people in Tampa Bay and we're like well but that'd be really late for you guys so that, that kind of goes to my next question is like you, you alluded to it with your story about run around your sofa you know at, at, at past midnight <laughs> um, it's gotta be tough like how how is it to follow an American sport like baseball where it isn't like football's easy it's once a week you can kind of pattern your whole week around it sleep a day early kind of thing Baseball's 162 games. I'm assuming you don't watch all of them, but what's the what's the routine like to follow yeah. as, as deep as you do? Yeah, it's 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 tricky. It is tricky. Um, the the yeah, every game is like impossible unless you've got some kind of work schedule that you're on like the night shift or uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I work a regular like kind of nine to five situation, so. It's about picking and choosing your battles, um, picking important <laughs> series, um, okay. a lot of condensed like games that. early in the morning. I am okay. often a, a condensed game in the morning guy. Um, is my usual way of following baseball on a day-to-day -day basis, um, which isn't the ideal way, but day games, day games are your friends uh, in, in the UK. So when it's 1 p.m. get start, that's a 6 p.m. start here in the UK. So those... you. Thursdays and Sundays, those are baseball days for everyone in the UK. Everyone Let's in the go. UK loves the day games. I remember there was a big um, commotion amongst the fans in Tampa because I think it was last year, the Guardians wildcard series that we had. I think every both those games were, were day games. And everyone was like, man, day games on a Tuesday and Wednesday for the playoffs? That sucks. And secretly, I was like, uh, I will not comment uh, <laughs> because I'm loving that. Um, play the playoffs are the hardest one for sure because they even they start later. Yeah, I know, I know there's people who deliberately follow West Coast teams like the Giants, for example, because their games start at like 3 a.m. UK time. But if you wake up early for your job, like, you can probably catch the end of a game. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the strategy that they're employing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will it's never tough. complain. I won't complain about the late night games. Like when we go to the West Coast, it's like, oh man, these games don't start until nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, there's people that have a lot worse guys. So I can't do the West Coast. The West Coast is, is impossible because that's like a 3 a.m. start time for me. Yeah. Uh, I actually loved it that the Rays brought their, their games forward half an hour earlier because then i can usually watch the first two or three innings of a game before yeah. bed now yeah. which is great trying to imagine waking up at like 5 a.m to go to work and it's like the fifth inning you know in a baseball game it's just kind of weird what do you think about like, it like hey that? they can close this out before coffee let's go right right let's go <laughs> um, i think there was an extra let's inning game. all right yeah there was an extra inning game one time where i was like the 16th back before the ghost runner rule and i woke up and the game was still going on i was like oh my gosh what's happened here um don't recommend but um I don't, is there at all an equivalent for you guys in the US? I guess if like the World Cup or the Olympics is in an exotic location. Yeah, you know, trying to follow the Women's World Cup over in New Zealand and, and whenever it's over in an Asian country or something like that, it's, I mean, you, you wake up and you go, well, they've already played two games. It's seven in the morning, but we had a 3 a.m. and a 1 a.m. and a 11 o'clock, you know. Yeah. yeah. Or the Olympics, when the Olympics are over there, it's kind of like, oh, you know, I do want to watch this sport or whatever so so we kind of have a they kind of make a like an, 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 an highlight reel or they replay the things in prime time that like hey you yeah. missed this 12 hours ago but like now you're going to sit down and watch it um but there's not really not really a, a kind of just wing, yeah. it, wing it and choose your game you want to watch an important game maybe i, I know or there's a couple yeah. of used to open early for, for the men's at world cup so yeah you could DVR well, as well yeah as 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 football soccer football has has been more popular in america premier league for sure there that i guess yeah because i mean you're talking your afternoon the early afternoon game 
is a 9 a.m., 10 a.m. thing yeah, here in the Sundays. States. Yeah. So there's some bars that open up um, early. So you can get a pint. Well, and it's on a Sunday, which is like there are laws here in Florida that like you can't have liquor before oh, 11. Yeah. But so there's, you know, but there's, there's people, it's, this is, there's ways around it. You can get a pint. You can get a pint while you're watching Premier League or something like that. So. Some some Long kegs time. and eggs and watch some watch some football. You know. Um, yeah. So I'll ask you just a basic question here. You know, is there a certain uh, favorite player you had, and maybe a reason why uh, you know he became your favorite player? Was there a memory you had of him that you were kind of just like, boom, you know, this is my guy? Yeah, I mean, for for the for the reasons listed earlier, Evan Longoria was my okay. was my first favorite player because uh, he was he was the guy that turned up in the big moments, wasn't he? He was he was Mister Ray for for a long time. The Longoria trade uh, hit me like a ton of bricks when that happened. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it did for for many in the Tampa area as well. So then it kind of transitioned to Willie Adames for a long time. Okay. Um, it's, now. Is it bad to say that being a Raids, Raids fan can make you a little jaded with coming to becoming attached to players because you never no, know how long they're going to be there? Huh. Um, I got attached to Willie Adamas and then he he disappeared. Randy's probably my guy now. Randy's the the guy for me now. I'm gonna if he ever if he gets traded out of nowhere, it's gonna be another another one to add to the pile. Um, my friend who I got into baseball in the past two years, uh, he followed the 2020 postseason with me during the pandemic because in the pandemic, we weren't at work, so sleep schedules didn't matter. So we <laughs> we watched the whole 2020 run. He bought me yeah. for Christmas a Blake Snell um, figurine. Two days later, on the 27th of December, he was traded to the Padres. And I was like, mm, mm. I said to my friend, I was like, this is the Rays experience. <laughs> like, yep. Full blown. You know, yeah. Uh, like get get buy a player's jersey, they're gone. You may as well guarantee that they're gone. Um, but Randy's definitely my guy right now. It went Longoria to Adames to Randy. I think is my is my current favorite player train at the moment. Um, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Uh, the I would say take us through maybe a special moment. You talked about game one sixty two, and that's kind of the beginning of your Rays fandom. But now. Now that you've been a race fan for so long, there are there maybe some moments that aren't necessarily, you know, you know, the World Series game or the or or a, or a large moment like that, but something where you're like, okay, this was special. Yeah, um, I remember watching. This was a weird. This is like a weird race fan for a race fan to celebrate, but it was game one of the 2013 ALDS. Okay. Uh, we got absolutely smoked, something like 13 to 5 by the Red Sox. It was the first time me and my dad got to watch a playoff game together like uh, live. Yeah. Um, he stayed up. I stayed up. He was in his Red Sox gear. I was in my Rays gear. Um, that was a really special memory. It, I could, I had, a, it, I mean, at the time it was tough for me, but it was a, um, it was really special to be able to, to spend that That's time. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's dad. really cool, dude. That's yeah. And cool. most, most of my base, fun baseball memories revolve around him because he got me into, into baseball in the first place. I've only seen what, um, one major league game live. It was not a Rays game either. It was a Blue Jays game. Okay. Uh, we went on uh, to Toronto, and we were hoping to line it up with the when the Rays we were in town, but it didn't line up. So we ended up watching a Blue Jays versus the A's game at the Rogers Center. That was really special um, as well because that was the first baseball game we got to see in person. Uh, the Rogers Center is a really nice, a really nice place to watch a ball game. You got the the tower up in the skyline that you can see from below the roof, um, which is really nice. And uh, the Blue Jays walked it off that day as well. They were losing one nothing um, to the A's. And then Justin Smoke and Kendris Morales, I think, hit back-to-back -back home runs in the ninth to walk it off. That was pretty cool. Um, and then also I got super invested. I think it was last year. There was like a random game in like July, August, where Drew Rasmussen was taking a perfect game into the ninth inning. I got super invested in that for... For no reason. I mean, a perfect game is a perfect game, right? So yeah. you get invested. But I was 
he gave up a double to start the ninth, and I was like heartbroken. I like I turned off the game. I was I was furious, and I don't know why. I don't know why I was so beat up about a game that we won anyway. Um, it's because you don't see that with the Rays anymore, right? Guys going deep into like into the ninth inning. You just yeah. you don't see that, and like I get the reasons why, and that's fine. Um, I'm trying to think other games that I got really hyped up for. Um, Willie Adamas' debut uh, game, he hit a home run against the Red Sox. That was on my that was on my birthday. That was pretty cool. Um, so those are probably some games that like off the top of my head really uh, yeah, stick out. That, yeah. that aren't the obvious ones. Yeah. The passion is definitely there. And it's that's cool. You got to do that with your dad, man. Shout out to all the dads out there. That's that's cool. That's a memory you'll never forget, man. That's 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 something fun right there. So I'll ask you here, maybe maybe talk a little bit. How did you, you know, maybe get into writing and a little bit of your career and stuff like that? You know, what did was there something that attracted you to it? You wanted to do it since you were young? Or? Yeah. So uh, I mentioned before that it's a bit of an island um, to be a, a British baseball fan at times. For sure. Um, I would sometimes rant to my dad about the Rays, and he'd be <laughs> like, he'd be like, I don't care. Are the Red Sox win it? Um, <laughs> um, so I had a lot of thoughts and I had a lot of feelings about the Rays. Um, some of them rational, some of them not, as as all fans can can speak to. Um, and there was a lot of times where you know Rays baseball Twitter discourse can be can either be great and really uh, insightful, and other times they can be really uh, passion filled and emotion filled, but not always the most uh, sensical. Um, and I kind of felt that there was some kind of balance to be taken there. In and I think Rays fans are really, really smart uh, in general uh, compared to other fan bases, um, and that's just because <laughs> of how the team operate and how they how they run. Right? Like, I don't think many Rays fan bases are doing what the Yankees are doing right now of going analytics are the, are the sport of the devil. Get rid of all analytics. Most Rays fans kind of find um balance in how analytics are used and are at peace with the unconventional methods but the broader baseball sphere is not so i was like i want to write about the rays and try and make sense of this weird team that don't make sense to the rest of the world to everyone else so that's kind of where it started where i was trying to explain i wanted to explain how the rays work to everyone else that didn't get it um writing has always been a part of my of my life um i grew up well i'm a i'm a te i'm a teacher of i'm a theater teacher now i okay. teach theater to, to high schoolers but um i spent a long time acting and performing writing and directing so creative writing has always been a part of that of my life um so i just was like i'm gonna spew all my thoughts about the rays and do it in a kind of ed educational but also fun way for hopefully uh, anyone can enjoy, even though it does do statistical analysis. Hopefully it makes sense to a broad audience and isn't alienating. That's kind of the balance that I want to find in my writing. How do you, uh, th through learning about analytics and but also keeping that balance, like how do you go about, like if you have a question, if someone pops in and you're like, you know, there's a trend I'm seeing or there's, how do you start that process of either validating an assumption or trying to dig through the data to see if there's something there? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Usually it comes from just uh, watching the games and then you go, hold on. So let's, let's take uh, my, my Zach Littell article to begin with. Um, I think there was a, there's a trend there where it goes, okay, Drew Rasmussen, Jeffrey Spring, Zach Littell, they're all they were all kind of so-so middling relievers that turned into, into pretty effective starters, which is like the weird reverse of what everyone in, in baseball does of, of turning struggling starters into good relievers. So I was like, right, there must be my my initial thought was, what's the common thread between them? Because the Rays would probably see something in each of these guys to pick them as the guys that would stretch out. So at that point, I was like, there must be a thread that I'm missing. Um, so then I just would go on to Baseball Savant. I'd go on to Fangraphs. Oh, okay. And I'd, I'd dig into each, into each player. 
Um, usually, usually, um, it's it's a uh, it's a trend that everyone else is seeing, and then. So like the Rays offense was bad in July. And I was like, yes. why the heck has that happened? Okay. So then I go, right, what do I know about baseball? Um, I know that hitting the ball hard is good. I know <laughs> striking it, I know striking out is bad. So I was like looking for trends and differences between April, May, and July. And I yeah. was looking for that. And then sometimes it like you said, it it kind of um confirms your assumption. And other times it's it's not. And when it's not is when it's most fun because then you've got to go, right, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> um, so it's usually something that everyone else is noticing, um, like a trend. Um, but then you've got to ask yourself, why is that trend happening is usually where, where it all has, starts. Has, just a follow-up on that. Has there been something that you were like, whoa, wait a second. I, I thought one thing, but actually, hmm. Yeah, um, it was the Rays offense thing in July. Okay. Um, it yeah. was the most like, what is going on? Yes. So, because they were hit, the, they were hitting the ball harder than any other month, like including April, where they were hitting a million home runs, and they were hitting the ball in the air more frequently than they were doing any other month. So that was really confusing because it's like the quality of their contact is better than ever. Why are they not getting any hits? Right. So that was like a, ah, where do I, what do I look at? Um, so I had to like divert costs to look at other, other things. Um, so then you notice things like the, the walk weight was down, for example. And then I was just looking at every graph that you could possibly look at where they were April and May and where they were in July. And then I looked at the amount of pitches that they saw was down in the month of July as well. So I was like, oh, they're pressing. That's it. So it, it, you eventually get there. And it was the same with the Latell article where you were like, oh, there's not actually a common thread between Rasmussen Springs and Latell. So I had to look a little bit deeper into what was actually causing the Rays to stretch those guys out as well. Um, Luke Rayleigh was a fun one as well. Like just looking into him because he was, he's just, how does he run so fast? We'll never know. He runs at 87% out of sprint yeah. speed and we'll and never he's a know. Big how he, guy, six, he's four, a, 235, I think like he's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a, a freak of nature and he's going under the most, national radars as well of like how good he is as a baseball player but he would be right. like if, if you had nine of him on a baseball team they'd probably win 90 games like <laughs> so it's 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 super fun i did not think i would get as much out of i as i do out of writing um because it makes you question everything uh and have that journalistic instinct and usually some and usually the rays no more data than we will. So that's why it's even more fun when it's not obvious what we find. So yeah, it's super fun and super engaging. And I think everyone should have that mindset of just question, question what you see and um, see if you can do some digging and find out more. So I got one last question for you here. Usually I ask, uh, you know, just a, a fan opinion about the team uh, and maybe just not about you here. So, what do you think the Rays have to do the rest of this season to, to get us to that World Series championship? You know, mm. we're, we're missing Shane. You know, Glass now has been pitching really well lately. Where You know, the bullpen's been shaky. The bats have been inconsistent here a little bit. What do you mm -hmm. feel the Rays need to do to get us to that World Series championship? Uh, one, stay healthy. But okay. that's kind of like a hard one to control, I think. Um, and we've already maybe failed that that bar already um but uh two stay stay within yourselves do not press do not try and be the hero there are a few players on that team that fall into that trap of trying to be the hero and try and press randy is is a is a big one for that where when he's in the zone one of the best players in baseball but He's gone through a slump recently where he's doing some big, long swings, um, which means that he's missing a lot of pitches that he should. He's on his way out of that now, but he, it was tough. 
He needs to be on his game. We need Brandon Lau to stay where exactly where he is, staying disciplined. We need Josh Lowe to stay exactly where he is. We need to stay selective because when we're selective, we're looking at our pitches. We're doing what we're doing now. We're doing what we're doing in April because I think the pitching will be fine. I am. I have no concerns about about the pitching. Okay. As long as no more starters go down. Yeah. We'll, and my only other thing that I think a lot of people miss is that we're going to make the playoffs. I don't think that's a doubt in anyone's right. mind. I think a huge factor is winning the division and skipping that wild card round. Uh, I think that's of paramount importance um, because playing any any team in a three game series is too random and too uh, up in the air. You know the. We could be playing the A's, we could be playing the Royals, we could be playing the Rockies in a three-game set in the playoffs, and we could like we could lose because baseball is a game of extreme variance. And in three game, you want to make the the odds as long as possible. Um, so five game set at all at all costs as well. So we need to try and win that division. That gate, that four game set against the Orioles in Baltimore, yeah. huge. So Summarize, uh, stay within ourselves and don't press, win the division. Skip the like card round. I dig I like it. it. I dig it. Well, we've talked a lot about uh, baseball. We've talked a lot about yeah. your family, yeah. which is, that's like, that's the best Number thing. One. I mean, I, I'm still thinking about you and your dad uh, being able to hang out for that that high stakes playoff game and, and, for sure. and uh, a little bit of ribbing, I'm sure, between the two. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> yes. It's still, it's still, <laughs> um, but uh, one thing you talked about is winning. And so we're going to move on to the rest of our show. But before we get into that, we got to talk about something that you, the listener, you can help us. And that is by voting for RBLR as best podcast at the best of the Bay. We've been nominated for this a couple times, but this is the year. This is the year you, you, you listening can bring this home for us. All you got to do is click the link in the description. It'll take you right to the Creative Loafing page where you can vote along for best restaurants and best news personalities. But inside the entertainment section, there's a best podcast. And right smack dab in the middle is RBLR. And uh, guys like Pat Davenport and Ben Whitelaw and you know, uh, James and Carlos at the Rowdies and Zach and the whole crew and Musab. And we, I want to bring this home for every single person that puts in work for you and your uh, enjoyment to, as we try to give you more of the teams you love. And all we're asking right now is give us a vote. Let the world know that the reader's choice of Creative Loafing is RBLR for Best Podcast. So, uh, Chris, now it's time for you to shine, my guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you've been really, really good so far in, in, in the early days here of, of the lounge, but it's time for your bet of the week. So so how did last week go? And we took the L. What do you got new? Mm. We took the L last week. We're 2-1-1. Okay. One one. It's okay. okay. We, it, was, it was an odd, uh, odd moment last week, so – we're going to go with Zach Wheeler here. He's at home uh, versus the Cardinals, who are averaging about 10 Ks uh, their last three games. His line is at six and a half. I think he hits it. Phillies are fighting for that playoff spot. Cardinals are the bottom of the barrel. Zach Wheeler's been pretty much money at home. I like the odds here, especially with the Cardinals averaging about 10, 10 Ks a game the past three games. They're just swinging and missing lately. So I'm going to ride the hot hand at home with Zach Wheeler. Uh, over six and a half Ks. Oh, today. over, over six and a half. I have it wrong yes, here. Yes, yes, over, sorry. Over, yes. over, over six and a half. Over, over, yeah, over. It'd be yes. good for my cousin, you know, my cousin Zach to uh, to to punch some Ks, although it is against the Cardinals, which I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, you I, do love, I love very much. I love the Cardinals. I know you do. Um, that, that's why you ribbed me, man. That's why you did this. Um, well, let's get the, so another Our very rock. unique aspect of Mr. Davenport and one that why we have him on today is because all of us here at the lounge, we talk about every week about pro wrestling. And so we're going to get into, uh, let me, let me get this. If I might, we're going to open up some sports cards here. And mm. I think that there it is a, if I can, let's see if I can do this correctly here. Whoop. There we are. So we're going to open up some AEW series two from upper deck because there's a pretty big, uh, pay-per-view that that after we get done with these cards we're going to run through every single match but before that maybe pat you're our good luck charm as we're still trying to find an autograph card here so here's jim ross who the last good time we opened up some of these cards we got a nice parallel of him 
And again, uh, uh, here's QT Marshall. Shall Marshall. Marshall. <laughs> again, yes. we are looking for, you know, the parallels, the relics, the autographs, the stuff that's going to be, you know, special. Um, Ortiz, but here's Ortiz who just, uh, spoiler alert, the, these guys just reappeared. Uh, here's Eddie Kingston in the gold uh, parallel. That's pretty cool. And then here's Matt Jackson. Okay. In a, I don't think these are numbered, but no, this, this is like a, a, a pyro parallel. Where you can see the fireworks in the background. Yep. yep. Or no, the, Justin, I think this is Justin Roberts fireworks. back there. And then here's <laughs> yeah. uh, Darby Allen. Yeah, just the dapper yapper back there. Here's Darby Allen, who's going to be a key figure. Ooh, that's oh, old school the, Max right there. Is Max Caster with the yeah. honky tonk man? Stash. He's got the stash too. And we got yeah. Tony Schiavone. So we got Shivani. a whole. We got Jr. and Shivani in in one pack. We just need um, Exc Excalibur for the set. Pat, do you get into collecting at all? No is an acceptable answer, but I would love to collect baseball cards, but they just don't sell them in the UK. So I've got to like ship well, them over from there. There the will. Tops did a UK version of some of these cards. Uh, like they did a top series, maybe 2020 or maybe 2021, where it was UK where they have their own special, like uh, oh. like up in the corner, it had a little like UK thing. Plus, like I remember in 19, I, I remember collecting a set from 1989, which was like for the UK specifically, they were a little wow. smaller. And they had like rules of the game. Like it was like, learn what a double is, learn what a triple play is, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I also collect uh, Pokemon cards as well, ooh, which is okay. yeah. not Some sport related, but pretty fun. Some money. No, in I that. dig it. Have you, so, so you're kind of, you, you know, the things about like foils and whatever. Yeah, is there, yeah, is yeah. there a, is there a Pokemon card that you have that's like a rare one or a cool special one for you? Uh, my best card at the moment is the they so they've got um series one Charizard. Do. No, <laughs> I don't have series one Charizard, or I'd be I would not be working at the moment. Let me tell you that. Um, That's true. I uh, I I got so there's a super there's it goes art rare and then there's super art rare. I have got okay. a super art rare a couple of those cards which are like shiny and they're like full card art Ooh. instead of like the square. It's, it's, they're, it's, it's probably Hader worth. Me like $50 as opposed to like the thousands, millions that like a series one is worth. Um, right. I used to be into Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but like my parents chucked all my old childhood cards out. So who yeah. knows if I had anything good there? Oh, that's, that's the worst man is like if, if coming back, cause what a lot of people just like pro wrestling with cards, what a lot of people have done is they, you know, you do it when you're a kid. And yeah. then you kind of lose, you know, you, you 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 move on to something. But then, um, kind of as you're as you're in your twenties and thirties, and you you have a maybe a career, you got some disposable income, you kind of start going back to the things that you like to do when you're a kid, and it might be collecting or, uh, I mean, especially during the pandemic, I mean, it just blew up. Here's a cool. Uh, well, one we get the Matt Hardy gold. Uh, that's like the least rare of all of them, but this is a canvas uh insert so there's actually like a it's like a um like a like a, a canvas material that mm. that is in here but then this is weird because he got well that's what's that serpentico getting yeah. thrown by matt hardy yeah um so these are sort of a i mean they're not super rare but they're um they're a, it's it's going to be some of those cards depending on the person can be can get up there as you try to collect the whole set here's a uh, brian danielson's debut uh, let's see. That's it. Kenny Omega's base card here. The Ocho, Chris Jericho's base card, and Sammy Guevara. Man, they can't even stay away from each other inside of a pack of cards. No, no. They're right next to each other. Right next to each other. That's pretty funny. Um, we, I did pull, I just saw Jamie Hayter. There is a Jamie Hayter in the set, which I believe is her rookie card. I don't know if she's had a, she wasn't in series one. But um, there's a few rookie cards in this set that weren't in. in here's uh, Armed Anderson here. <laughs> Wardlow, which we haven't Lord seen God. in a while. No. Nope. There's the FTR gold parallel. And then here's a. This Ooh, I private believe, party. Is this the, this the fireworks? So it's like got a shiny prism to it. Mm. Private party, which uh, Mark Quinn's another guy we haven't seen. Oh, here we go. Here's a numbered, uh, a serial numbered card. Of powerhouse, powerhouse. 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 
So this is at a 399. You can see this is number 29 of 399. There's only 399 of these in the world. And you're looking at one, buddy. And of nice. course, someone someone he was associated. That's the best card we've pulled so far. Was Ricky Starks holding that FTW championship? They yeah. used to be a team uh, as Team Taz there. Tully Blanchard. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting the four wow. horsemen here. We pulled an arm, then we got a Tully. And then here's Anthony Bowens, the five tool player. Boom. Varsity Bonds. You said there's an autograph in here somewhere. Uh, th so there's a there. This this this. I, f I feel like there's a fatter card in here. Okay. I think there's Ooh. a this. Like I could be wrong, but if this one feels, it it does feel like another different. relic or something. Um. Yeah. It could be because those relic cards are fatter. No, I'm just hallucinating. I'm just hallucinating. They're just. It did. Wow. It the it the weight did feel weird. Here's on Helico, who we haven't seen him in a long time. It's been a while. Uh, we showed, we showed the ground original. Man, uh, so did you? Did you? Well, a lot of Lucha Underground guys are AEW guys. Yeah, and it was it's, yeah. it's something that I would love to go back and watch some of those. I mean, you got AR Fox and Swerve Strickland and um, uh, Brian Cage. I mean, so many, yeah. so many guys. Here's Trent Beretta, who no longer has the question mark in his name. We can now uh, confirm he is Trent. He is Trent Trent Beretta. Because <laughs> they were, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangman. Yeah. Uh, we got Keith Lee, who has been up and down with creative. Um, not quite sure what they're going to do with him. He seems a little lost. I don't know. He's tried a few different things. He had that gray hair for a little bit. Yeah, and here's Coke. Jade Cargill, which has also been uh, out. But I My think age. hers has been more of a R and R. I don't know if yeah. she had an injury or she just was taking a vacation after. I think so. Being champ for. Well, she's in a age. she's in a different situation where you know she she kind of doesn't need the money. <laughs> she right. she wrestles cuz she likes to, you know. She's right. uh, married to a, a former baseball player, you know. Uh here's Stu Grayson who is now coming back as part of the um the Righteous. Yeah. And they're like feuding mm -hmm. with the Dark Order with with him. Uh Varsity Blondes where we haven't seen Griff Garrison at all and Brian Pillman Jr is in WWE right now. He is. Here's our champion right now, Hikaru Shida. Yep. Finally getting her run. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, Pat, how was it? Because, like, Sheeta had the championship during the pandemic. But, like, yeah. um, what was it? What was your experience watching wrestling, which was one of the few things that uh, uh, it was the only – it's not yeah. a sport, but it's the only sport-like activity that was going on during that time? Uh, it was kind of weird. Um, like the the empty arenas were real weird experiences when you like the Thunderdome and yeah. Um, the stuff at Daly's place was a little bit better because they had the the kind of small invited crowd. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a weird time. I remember watching WrestleMania in the empty arena and they didn't even have a thunderdome there that was that was a bizarre experience but i'm glad it was still on um and i'm glad the the guys that you know were uncomfortable oh, wrestling oh, dude oh, look uh, at this, this we got our penta, boy. dude penta kicking orange cassidy right in the bread basket there <laughs> that is a beautiful card that's that's good artwork that's fun and uh, penta is a guy that i collect in my uh, personal collection there so that's that's awesome shout out to uh ray phoenix though with the retweet last week hey how about yeah that? Hey, how about that we get yeah, uh chris we picked uh uh we picked ray phoenix as the wrestler of the week and uh and he retweeted it that was pretty wow. cool he liked it and retweeted it he actually liked yeah, it man. and it yeah cool. that was dope did not expect so, that he took friend, his time friend, out to friend do of the show Pint for sure <laughs> <Ray> <laughs> Now, now Phoenix, here's someone in. we're we're gonna get to because Lee Johnson, but someone that we're gonna really talk about here is this Adam Cole. So to wrap this up, our best our best card was this numbered powerhouse sure. odds. No relics, no autographs, but I I love these canvas cards. So that I'm like my, and that's part of it is like, look, this card is maybe worth you know, five bucks or something like that. But to me, I'm not selling that bad boy. That bad boy is staying yeah. staying with home. 
me. Um, so let's do this. Let's get, and now of course was our worthless sports card breaks. And that's why I call it worthless sports card breaks. Cause it's like, uh, as I try to get this right here, boom, there we are. Um, a lot of these cards, they're worth a buck maybe, but to, if you collect a certain baseball player or a certain person or whatever that you really like, um, can't stop those memories. Um, but speaking of memories, Chris, Pat, there are going to be a lot of memories as there's 80 plus thousand people that are going to be filling Wembley Stadium here. Let's I go. thought it would be very important for us three who are huge, huge AEW and wrestling fans in general to talk about the entire card. So kind of working in a way uh, of, of importance. I mean, all these matches are, are interesting, but let's start with the most interesting. So uh, we'll talk about Adam Cole versus Maxwell Jacob Freeman, who is walking in as the AEW world champion. Pat, who, and we'll go through everybody here, who do you have winning this match uh, first and foremost? And then if there's one, like the most important thing that you're looking or most interesting thing that you're looking for in this match? The most important thing that I am looking for in this match is... It's probably to see uh, whether or not we see the breakup between Adam Cole and MJF. It's mm. whether or not they decide to eke that out, or if we get the big the big blow up. Because I think that's the one of the hardest things to call on the on the whole night, on whether it's actually going to happen tonight or not. I think it is. I think it is. But I could also very much see them drawing it out a little bit longer. It's it. I don't know. I don't know. Either uh, way. We Oh, Who do you have winning it? Who do you have winning it? I, I have MJF winning. MJF retaining. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Chris, Cole or Maxwell Jacob Freeman? The build to this has been great, man. Uh, Storyline's been awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, they had number one sales and merch for AEW for 2023 with their shirts. I think, I think this has been one of the better storylines in wrestling in a while. It's been entertaining. It's been one of those ones you're tuning in to see. Even my wife's like... Oh, what are they going to do this week? And my wife does not watch wrestling. So it's, it was doing, they're doing the right thing, you know, the comedy. But I think tonight, I think the turn comes. I think it starts with the, the Ring of Honor tag match. Something happens in there where you, you've already seen Cole fake the super kick. You've seen MJF with the getting frustrated, seeing Cole holding the belt. Um, I think MJF retains. If he doesn't retain, there's something in that contract, in my opinion, that there is a rematch clause. Maybe it happens a week later at all in. Uh, yes. I, I think there's something in that contract. We don't know where MJF remember. He's still the devil. He's he's the, he's the mm. people's devil, man. But I, I think, I think MJF goes full face here. I think we see oh. a Cole heel, heel turn. Cole, um, okay. And maybe somebody comes out at the end there and we see something happen with uh, our boy, Roderick strong. So I got MJF retaining, uh, okay. Just because that's what I want, but I feel like there's some kind of the, something happens with that contract. But this match is going to be epic. You know, the first match they had was amazing. So I'm I'm thinking 30, 45 minute banger easily uh, and a crazy finish. Yeah, I definitely believe uh, there will be a seismic shift in terms of because the story is not done. In my opinion, they're going to draw it out. It's just now is the time for the breakup now is the time where yeah. one person will go one way the other one will go in a different direction because i have adam cole as the new aew world champion with the streamers and the confetti and eighty thousand fans booing him because adam cole will be turning heel uh more so than mjf turning face uh but i believe that it is because Adam Cole is the leader of a brand new faction that has Roderick Strong, Matt Taven, and uh, and 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 Mike uh, Bennett as the new reformed kingdom with Adam Cole with the title, and they all four are in the middle of the ring with purple confetti or whatever color they're going to. They were purple last time, or red, or I think yeah. they were red at one point, purple at another. Yeah. But whatever their color that is going to be their color. Uh, that's the confetti that will be flying down as you have a you have a, a brand new heel champion with a brand new faction that they've elevated uh, instantly because you have you don't have the JS anymore so now you have a new just top heel faction uh, led by mm. Adam Cole. 
Um, now MJF, I think, uh, uh, will something will happen. Chris, I, I'm with you because uh, I do want to circle back because the important part of this is the, at the at the zero hour. This is not normal that you have the two main event people as a tag team in the pre-show of that event uh, going for a different title, which is the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships against Aussie Open. Pat, how – this is a unique situation. So, like, how do you think – like, will they? Will it be a long match? Will it be a competitive match? Will there be a screwy finish? How do you see that setting up the, the ultimate main event? Um. I don't think it's going to be too overbooked because uh, it's on the it's on the zero hour show. So I think it will be about five to ten minutes, like semi competitive. But it's going okay. to be one of those where MJF and Adam Cole. It's going to be one of those classics where they get get in each other's way, cost each other the win, Aussie Open retain. They okay. they have their tension in the build up to their main event match, but nothing yeah. too nothing too big. It's more of a, a selling point for the main card. Okay, uh, Chris. Uh, like, uh, what do you? Wh- how do you think that tag team match finishes up and 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 get us gets us ready for the main event later on? I agree with Pat. I think it's a maybe ten minute match. I think MJF and Cole maybe collide into each other. One of them gets rolled up. Maybe Cole super kicks MJF by yeah. accident, costing them the match. It's going to be something like that to build for that main event because the turn hasn't happened yet. It's not there. It's been close, but they're still hugging. So you got to have something leading us up into that main event being like, okay, MJF's pissed, Cole's pissed. It's got to yeah. have that fire going into it. So I think it's a quick match. Like he said, you got to play it safe. You don't want your big stars to get injured, obviously, in the zero hour, but you want people tuning in to see this match and see – I think everybody's tuning in to see the storyline. Where is this going towards the main event? Yes. So some kind of some kind of quick match, like I said, a, a, maybe a missed super kick, a missed double clothesline, something results in one of them getting pinned, and, and Ozzy Open uh, definitely retains here. Yeah, I love I love the the idea that they are just there. Like one of them doesn't want to tag in because they want the other one to be tired more in the match. Or, yeah, or that's good. They're uh, you know, there's mind games of that, but also like um, they're close to it though. Like they do a couple things, and they, they, I think there'll be a little bit of an intrigue, and there'll be an act one, act two before the finish. But like um, they'll be close. But I believe Roderick Strong also makes his presence known in this match. And that is the giant wedge that is that has been this entire time. And, you know, uh, Roger Strong really hasn't, other than being in the background brooding at, uh, you know, at watching television sets, he hasn't been out in a physical way. And I believe that he will be in this. And that will be the, 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 the seemingly random distraction or whatever that costs them. Because I believe MJF is who gets like rolled up and pinned. And it's, and it's MJF who is like, Buddy, your friend, Adam, your buddy cost us this championship. And that's what really causes the true, true rift. And 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 then later on, little did they know this was all the plan. Cole has been orchestrating this entire thing the entire time yeah. uh, as the faction leader. And they were like, maybe we were going to get this tag team gold, but inevitably I will get that championship. And I think that's the story that's told. Like um it. But speaking of tag team championships, uh, we have a rubber match between FTR, who are the world tag team champions, and the Young Bucks. Now, each team has won one match prior to this, and that's really what this is about. This This is about the championship, but it's way more about this legacy they keep pushing and who is the best tag team and who is uh, this generation's best tag team. I don't know if you sum that all up in one match, but I think they're going to try their damnedest to put on the best tag team match that we've ever seen in our in our lives. Um, Pat, who do you have winning the 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 Wembley? This could be a main event too, man. I mean, this could have Absolutely. been the main yeah. event of this entire show. Uh, who do you have winning FTR versus Young Bucks, and uh, and and how do they do it? Oh, I love both of these teams. And I think if you asked me a week ago, I would be really, really torn. Person out, out of the ring circumstances may have played a factor in how this match is going to end up uh, mm. with the incident with, with Cash um, being in a bit of trouble with the law. Recently, there was concerns he wasn't going to be let into England uh, for a little bit. Um, I think it's going to be the Young Bucks. I think the Young Bucks are going to take it. Okay. Um, I was I was leaning the other way, but I think now I think they're going to 
it's almost a semi-punishment booking to give the Young Bucks the win with Cash being in trouble, almost sabotaging such a big match ahead of All In. I think we're going to give the win to the Young Bucks. All right. All right, Chris? I think this is going to be a five-star, 40-minute, maybe 27 false finishes, you know, <laughs> flipping everywhere from the Bucks. I think they both put it all on the line. I think at the end, you know, you got everybody dead, tired. It's going to be a crazy finish. I think FTR retains here, though. I don't think the Bucks. I, I agree with what Pat's saying on the the, the cash end. It, it, we really don't know much into that, but I think I think FTR retains here. I think you keep the belts on them for a little longer. I don't think the Bucks need to be tag champs right now. Um, I think they're going to build their way back up. Maybe feud with the Hardys a little bit, get some matches with them. But I think it's a crazy clean finish. I think mm -hmm. FTR retains in, in a clean finish because both teams have mutual respect for each other. I wouldn't see any kind of messy finish in this. I'd be disappointed if there was. I'd like to see a clean finish. But uh, I have FTR come out on top in an absolutely just epic tag match. Tune into this one. This might be – this might be uh, – with these two teams in this environment with 80-plus thousand, you're going to see everything they got. I know that for a fact. You know, So I got FTR retaining them. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a clean match. I think they they go out intending to put on a classic, and I think that's exactly mm -hmm. what they do. No tomfoolery, because you're already going to have that in the main event. That's what separates yeah. that main event from this main event. Because Cole right. and MJF could go out there and have a five-star classic as well. For I sure. believe there will be more shenanigans in that one. But to offset that, FTR and Young Bucks just go out and have literally a legacy match like literally like yeah i think they're going to try to say if there's one match you ever watch it's wembley stadium for that title i i also believe the ftr will retain um because i believe the young bucks one they don't want to put themselves over in this situation i think that they want ftr to be known as the one who won one that because they're gonna they're gonna have 10 more matches before it's all said and done yeah, right but this is maybe none bigger than this one and i believe that's the stamp they want to leave is that they they uh they put over ftr and and because if they were going to strip the belts from them or punish them or do something maybe they would have done it plus there's a whole seven days later there's a whole pay-per-view that they could somehow do some kind of three-way or whatever or a rematch to the rematch or or something there there's still room that they could do something where they get the belts off of ftr but right i don't think they 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 want to want to ruin it right now um let, let's get to the other world championship which is the aew women's world championship it is a four-way it is the only women's match on the card um but in in true all in style, they're they're going back to a four way, a women's four way. We haven't really talked about that. These parallels between the last all in and this Correct. all in. Um, MJF, of course, opened the first all in. Now he's being the main event. Of, well, I guess he's opening it in the in the zero hour too. But that's fun. Um, but it's Hikaru Shida who comes in as the champion, and and she was last the champion. Again, we talked about that during the pandemic. Now she gets to walk in with the belt in, in front of the Wembley crowd to face Britt Baker, Tony Storm, and maybe a little bit of home cooking for Soraya, who is the, the, you know, the legend that's in this match. Um, all four of these women have been a world champion. Soraya has not won the AEW Women's World Championship yet, um, but all four Four of these women have been a world champion at least once in in, in AEW. So, uh, Chris, who do you have in this match? Uh, who do you have coming out, and, and how does that happen? Man, this is this was a tough one for me. I, I think, honestly, I think it could go any way here. I think all four have potential to win. I think it could be a surprise. Maybe Soraya's hometown, she picks up the win. You know, I don't think you put the belt back on Tony Storm necessarily. I honestly have DMD winning myself. I think it's a okay. shock. I think she's an original. She hasn't been champ in a while. I know Sheeta was champ through the uh, the tough times of COVID. Yes. Uh, Britt Baker's just an original. I think if you're going to change belts here, I think it's the women's belt. I know Sheeta just won, but like I said, we got all out a week later. Maybe you could swing something as a rematch or something. It, it's kind of crazy with these pay-per-views a week apart. You really, It's hard to predict. It really is because these storylines can go any direction, obviously, but – I yeah. think DMD wins. I don't think she pins Sheeta. I think she pins somebody else, maybe leading to Sheeta being, hey, you you didn't pin me. You know, uh, maybe she comes up with some excuse like, hey, you didn't pin me to, to beat the belt. You know, you win the belt. You rolled up Tony Storm or you rolled up, 
you know, Soraya. So I got DMD myself, but I, I think it's going to be a fun match. Pat, do you think there's any, I mean, I'll ask you the same question, but like, uh, do you think this is just a clean women's exhibition or are there, I mean, I don't know where, where maybe um, you have Jamie Hayter in the, in the mix, like in terms of an appearance, not necessarily coming back. I physical, have this, but... I have this down. I have this as a clean one. I have this as okay. like, no, no interference. Um, where I'm, t you can make a really logical case for, I think any of the four women in the match, I think, you could argue me round to any of them. I think this is the homecoming feel good moment. I think Soraya is gonna 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 win it. This is gonna be like the big uh, happy moment of the show where she's been out for so long and she wins it in front of the Wembley crowd, which is like oh my gosh. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't back my British compatriot here. Um, <laughs> so I've got, I, I'm going to take Soraya, I like um, I like and it. I think that I think it's smart that it's a fall way so that they can you know make sure that she's kind of safe and not too heavily involved in the match or in the dangerous spots in case they're still concerned about her health. My one concern is: Do you trust her with the belt um, at this stage in her career? I think so. But there's a pay per view a week away, so you can give her the flowers and she could drop it a week later. So I'm going I like Soraya. It. I like. Yeah, it. I, I think they're gonna run with Soraya as as a uh, as a champion. I, I don't think she'll wrestle every week or whatever, but it'll be. I mean, the next time she wrestles will probably be not all out, but whatever the next pay per view is, um, because there's a lot of storylines that they can open up with that. You've got the Outcast bring it back. Tony Storm is also in that match, and she is obsessed that she lost to Hikaru Shida. Um, now they can throw another wrench because I also think they might want to break up the outcast or it's, it's kind of run its course. We're, 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 we've outlived it's, it's, it's time here. So I also think, man, they're going to have mom and dad and Zach Zodiac and everybody sitting ringside and Zach's going to jump the barricade and, 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 and hug Soraya in the middle of the ring. And then, but meanwhile, Tony Storm is throwing a pity party over in the corner uh you know and it's like ruby soho comes out and it's like hey get get your butt up we need to hug our best friend who just won and it's like well this is tony storm's biggest disappointment that in front of eighty thousand people she did not get it done and she had to watch and now she has to watch over her shoulder every day that shiny gold belt that's over and on her on so there's 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 way more intrigue that i think they can pull out of it um with with soraya winning but uh, I think Sheeta getting to walk into that stadium with the belt and get the massive pop that it's going to have. I mean, all every one of these women are fan. Everyone loves them. And, and I think this is going to be uh, a, a good showcase for that. Um, well, speaking of, uh, of compatriots that you have over there, um, there's another big name that's uh, going to be fighting a legend. And that's the match between Chris Jericho and the aerial assassin, probably Will Osprey, who will probably be walking in to elevate uh, 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 as as his theme song. So, who's got the better theme song, Pat? Is it the New Japan mm -hmm. Elevate uh, Osprey, or is it eighty thousand people singing Judas? Judas in my mind. Oh boy, Judas in Wembley is gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm. I'm in Liverpool right now, and I'm gonna hear yeah. it from here. Like it's gonna <laughs> be insane. I can't wait to hear Judas at Wembley. I don't think you get it. I think the commentators should just zip it because they're not gonna be able to be heard. Nope. I don't know if you guys have seen stuff at Wembley before. It gets loud in that. Mm, it's gonna be the, insane. Yeah, it's and. British fans, as you've seen in the times where wrestling has come to the UK before, we are a, a vocal bunch <laughs> when it comes to wrestling. Yeah. So that's going to be awesome. I'll give the edge to Jericho on the theme song, but okay. in the match itself, mm. I, again, I got, I got to back, I got to back my boy. I got to back Will Ospreay. I'm really looking forward to this, to yeah. this match. Actually, I'm a big fan of both guys. I think they'll they'll bring some really great stuff out of each other because while Will Ospreay is maybe pound for pound like up there with Kenny with like greatest in-ring performer of the generation in my opinion maybe I'm biased because I saw him wrestle in front of like 300 people in in tiny UK indie shows back in the day but um 
he's just he's the best and i but he's not afraid to get silly which like jericho loves to do from time to time as well so i think they'll put on a proper showman's match with full of fun spots and fun interactions with each other as well but will osprey will take the dub oh chris you got you got the you got the ocho winning over over osprey or I think we all agree on this one. I think I think, I think Osprey takes it uh, home territory. I think it's a good clean match. Uh, Jericho's Jericho's okay getting pinned. He doesn't mind losing and taking the pin. He's he's yeah. he's great at doing what he does. Jericho's a legend. Like you're putting people over and being just a supportive guy in the back. I think this is going to be better than people think. I think Jericho still got a little bit in him. I think people are doubting Jericho right now. You know, he kind of he, he goes back and forth with that kind of beer gut look where he's kind of in shape and he's kind of not. So yeah. I think a lot of people are questioning if he can hang, but Jericho's still Jericho. I think he's got this match in him. Um, I think Osprey wins, but I think it's going to be, I think it'll be a good 15, 20 minute solid, really good two guys in the ring, uh, safe match, but I got Osprey winning this one. I think it's going to be a lot of tomfoolery. Uh, I don't think yeah. this will be a five star classic at all. I think Will Osprey will be able to. I think. I think the the, the question is like w- Jericho is now a full face, right? Or you know, he he doesn't have his people. I mean, he's got uh, uh, Sammy Guevara is like the only well, that's man one in thing. the world. I think Sammy interferes. He's I got do. the. I think well, and so maybe maybe there's a story to tell there where it's like mm-hmm. Osprey is just leaps and bounds better than Jericho, and it is apparent. And and and. Jericho's having to pull everything out to even be close to this dude so much. So well, but Sammy's a face too, right? Sammy's not really a heel anymore. Right Cause now. I would say maybe, maybe Sammy has to like, oh, am I throwing in the towel? Like, Oh man, like, dude, like I'm watching my hero get dismantled in front of me. How right. do I, you know, I, I think there's a story there that, that, that can be told. Um, but I, I, I really don't think because considering the other matches that will give be given considerable time to be Matt classics, I think this is more of a it's a it's a David versus Goliath, except that it's Chris Jericho yeah. is the David, and it's like here's Will Ospreay just whooping up on Jericho so much that you feel sorry for him because Os- Osprey will be will be cheered, but he will fight as a heel. I think this Correct. entire yeah. thing. And and you have and you still have the Don Callis thing going on. Yeah. That's why I think there's a lot of shenanigans and a lot of story development that's happening through can Jericho even survive? And then it turns out that like he can survive. He didn't need you to throw in the towel, but inevitably uh you know father time comes for us all. Um Father Time has not come for two other competitors, though. Uh, CM Punk versus Samoa Joe is the next one we'll talk about for the real, quote unquote, real world's championship. Um, Pat, how do you feel about them doing this real world's championship run? How does this card? How does this match fit on this card? And are you excited to see two, two, you know, Ring of Honor legends going at it? Uh, yes, I am. I think, I think the real world championship thing is not going to last. I think they're just waiting for an opportunity to do a unification match down okay. the line. Okay. Um, Agreed. so with, and I think CM Punk is the guy that they want on the collision side of the unification match. Um, and this is the most confident I think I am in almost of any of the matches on the card that CM Punk retains. Okay. Um, I think this will be a good match. I think it will be very strike heavy. I think it will be a clean match. I don't think there'll be, you know, shenanigans of any description. Um, do I think it will be as good as their ROH matches? No. But I think it'll be. I still think it'll be great. I think the crowd will bring a lot of energy for both of these guys. Um, and I think, yeah, CM Punk will retain. It'll be a good match. I'm scared it might get lost in the shuffle a little bit of you know the younger guys on like the FTR Bucks stuff and the main mm-hmm. event. Um, but yeah, Punk retains. It'll be fine. But I don't. I think it might get lost in the shuffle by the end. Uh, yeah, Chris, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, are you? I think you got to book this one right, like in the card, because um, it's low key. Like it's, it's two legendary guys. I mean, I don't, I'm not a CM Punk fan, but you still got two guys in the wrestling business that have been around forever, been around all the companies, you know, done the right thing. So I, I do think CM Punk wins this somehow, some way. I can't see him, 
I can't see him losing to Samoa Joe as much as I'd like for Joe to win. Uh, I do think it's a, I think it's a clean match though. I think, I think it's a good one, I, I, but you're right. I think it could get lost in the shuffle. So I think it's got to be placed right uh, in the card, you know, put, put them maybe in the middle, uh, have them, you know, I think this is another 20 minute match, maybe, maybe 15 here, some big shots and big chops, uh, maybe some bigger moves, but yeah, I think punk wins. I think punk wins somehow, some way. I don't know if it's a, Choke out a knockout on Joe. I don't know if Joe takes the pin clean. I can't. Oh man, I don't know if I see Samoa see, Joe taking a clean pin. That's my the, problem. Yeah, this is where I come in because I actually think Samoa Joe wins the match. Okay. Uh, because I think CM Punk is 100 percent heel. He goes all the way and he cheats. He cheats, cheats, cheats. Samoa Joe is the one person in the world that always has his number. And will and, and I hope will forever. Ha- I think I hope that Samoa Joe is never loses another match to CM Punk ever, 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 ever. I, I hope that it's just this kryptonite, and he always had to cheat. And and I think that's what he does here is he he gets somehow. It, he's been 50-50. People like him. People don't like him. I think he wants to go complete heel. He wants nothing more than eighty thousand people to be uh, booing him because he cheats. And Samoa Joe wins, but somehow isn't the real, oh, you won because of this or that or whatever. And um, and you're not the real world's champion. I still am the real world's champion. And it's like, dude, you you hit him with a chair and you got disqualified. Like, you know, whatever. Like, F you, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think these are two guys that don't have uh, – I mean, they're going to work around their weaknesses, I think, is, is what I want to say. And I, that's why I think it's, it's not a clean finish, and I think that's why the story is still there where they can do a whole other match in a week if they really want to. Because um, I don't – I mean, I, having this real world's championship, I think, made more sense when if, – if Max is going to retain, and maybe he does. But I also think that there's better storylines that they can do to right. keep keep CM Punk away from the world championship uh, and the unification. Mm-hmm. But I think they head towards it. I, I really, really like what you said there, Pat. Um, but uh, this match in particular, I think is going to be the popcorn match. If there's any of them, this is going to be the one where um, it's cool. They get their interests and everything, but it's, it's, um, it's just there to fill up eight to 10 minutes of, 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 of and, and, further a storyline but really nothing con- con- monumental or uh, consequential yeah. happens here um well because i think that 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 kind of a match is there to cool down after you have absolute bonkers craziness that happens when you have a stadium stampede match with orange cassidy the best friends eddie kingston penta el cerro miedo Right, and I believe them. They're still doing mystery partners. Yeah, has or did they? Or, or did they? They they said it. it they this is what it yet. is. Okay, because I still have it as a mystery partner because it, it doesn't have Phoenix here, but it still says mystery partner versus Moxley, Claudio, Wheeler, Santana, Ortiz, and a mystery partner. Um, so there's still that mystery partner on this card, but I uh, collision hasn't happened yet for us. Uh, by the way. Because we're, we're we're cheating when we're doing this, but um, if there is a mystery partner, Pat, who do you think that mystery partner will be on both sides, and who do you have winning the stadium stampede? I mean, and this is going to be madness. Yeah, um, I mean, hmm, I think I like uh, Ray Phoenix is probably like probably going to be a factor in some way. He won't be there. He won't be there. Yeah, I believe it's a visa issue why he's even got pulled out of the match. Uh, that's duh. that's that's why they did the whole injury mm. angle. He's in an ambulance last time you saw him. Damn, I thought he was going to make a surprise surprise return. I mean, maybe um, maybe they worked out that same visa office with Cash Wheeler as they let they let. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, hmm. Mystery partner is a tough one. Hmm. Who do you think wins? One. Who do you think wins though? Like either way, there's the good guys and the bad guys. There. <laughs> yeah, I I think hmm, this is a tricky one. I think the good guys win. I think the okay. best friends team win. Blackpool Combat Club, 
my fave faction in AEW right now for the record. So this pains me to say, but like stadium stampedes are, are built to be silly fun matches, and it, yeah, I think they're they're built to be. But the big the big fun matches are built to be won by the good guys, right? Giving the bad guys the the, the Muppets. Yeah. So uh, I haven't deeped it deep thought it much more than that. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go with with best friends. Uh, okay. And good guys. Okay, you can think about mystery partner uh, as we get Chris. One, do you think it's good guys or bad guys? And um, uh, if there are mystery partners, who do you think they are? And um, I think we're just in for an insane, crazy, and it's live too. It's not like this is pre-recorded like most of the other yeah. stadium stampedes have been, or some of them. So I really don't know what to expect here. I'm, I'm not exactly looking forward to this match. I think it'll be okay. fun to watch. Okay. But as far as storyline goes, to me, this is just a going to be a cameras are going to be everywhere. Shots are going to be everywhere. You're going to probably be missing some moves. Uh, but I do think I think the OC squad wins here. Okay. Um, I think I think the best friends have been getting a little more of a push here, a little more TV time. So I don't see them taking the L right here. Um, I, it's OK for BCC to lose here and, and it doesn't hurt them. It's going to be a crazy yep. match anyway. You can still yep. keep going with them. Uh, as far as mystery partners go, I really don't know, man. I've been thinking about it. I just, I can't pinpoint maybe someone from overseas. They both mm -hmm. get, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a superstar from over there. Mm -hmm. Um, I was trying to think of who would really tie in with them. So it, it's, mm -hmm. it's up in the air for me. Honestly, <laughs> I, I know you got something you want to say. I so do. I'm gonna let you say what you I want do. to say. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's what's interesting about this match is I believe right that what this leads to is Orange Cassidy versus Moxley for that international championship. Correct. I believe that is yeah. the big storyline that comes out of this. But I think the alternate storylines is the is the frac the the uh internal friction within the the Blackpool Combat Club. I also think this is a faction that needs to be kind of either something a new a new story needs to be told with them because right now they're just kind of like we're a bunch of badasses that that are badass badasses it's like okay cool um but we're we're we we pushed that to get wheeler yuda up to status for sure we're losing a little bit of this and i think there's there's ways that they can break off they don't have to necessarily like wheeler yuda and claudio castagnoli could sort of still be like friends and together because i think the i think the good guys do win i think that it's it's orange cassidy and and eddie kingston and 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 all in pentagon they all get the the the, the cool rubby and been there if they do mystery partners, which I, according to this, they will, and I think storyline it works better too. I believe you bring over a New Japan guy like say Tomohiro Ishii, and it's a it's a brawling kind of match. You can bring him in. You like Okada? I don't think is the guy who comes in. I mean, it could be Okada, but it wouldn't. I don't think you bring him yeah. in for this. But for a running around the whole stadium, and you bring in Tomohiro Ishii, who is in a faction with Orange Cassidy and Best Friends because mm -hmm. they are part of Chaos, uh, technically. And and you bring in because the original All In had New Japan part of it, so you get to bring New Japan into this one too. Um, but then there's another Blackpool Combat Club uh, storyline that I believe happens, and that is that a mystery partner is Nigel McGinnis, who comes in as as a guest of the BCC. Maybe not he's in BCC, but he's definitely someone. And you could even have. Uh, a Brian Danielson be the one who introduces him. I don't know if this again. I haven't even looked up the spoiler. I haven't spoiled it, uh, Collision for myself, so I have no idea if this happens or gets set up or whatever. But this is how I would do it. I would have, I would have a uh, Brian Danielson come out and say, you know, um, mm -hmm. even though I don't like this guy and I know he doesn't like me, but he's the only professional wrestler that I've ever known in in the UK or whatever like that, and that's why he will come and fight. In a brawling match uh, 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 with with all those dudes, and um, and you got a bunch of guys on the good guy side that will be more than happy to flop around for for Nigel McGuinness, and that pop, that pop for Nigel McGuinness would be huge. Uh, yeah, yeah. I also got one other. This is a very rogue suggestion to join okay. the good guys. I think Ishii is probably more appropriate, like you said, but um, this is a rogue one. Um, but he has been involved with like in the like kind of uh promotion of British wrestling that's kind of surrounded the country the past couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, not specifically with AEW. Grado. Okay. 
Grado is no. I don't know how much you know Grado. Yeah, uh, he, but he but fits he, with the Orange Cassidy best friends. He fits, he yeah. fits with that vibe. He f- would fit a silly stadium stampede match. He's loved, yes. loved, loved, loved in the UK. Yes, and his yes. theme music of "Like a Prayer." Yes, would go in. Oh, if they got the rights to Madonna. Oh my God! So what about Don Dan Housen? Like, Dan Housen, maybe. Dan Housen would also be good, but yeah, man, it's tough, I, right? I mean, Grado, Grado's yeah. a good one. I didn't. Okay, I didn't think of that. I, I saw. I was racking my name like <sighs> British British people that would pop the crowd. Yeah. I think I think it's another British uh, pop. Uh, no yeah. pun yeah. intended, but I think it's. I think <laughs> I think this is the. I, I think this is the moment. Is is you're like, oh, this is about to be a crazy thing anyway. And we get Nigel McGinnis. And Nigel McGinnis yeah. is like teamed up technically with Brian Danielson, considering yeah. all the you're a clam digger and this because I because I I mean I think that was supposed to be a, the match. It was going to be Nigel versus Brian Danielson mm-hmm. at this event. That would make but, sense. But, but with Brian breaking his arm, uh, that changed these plans. Um, and so I think Over that's a way under. you could. What's that? Three and a half. Over under three and a half British jokes within the stadium time being like mm-hmm. someone getting slammed into a telephone box. Buddy, there's uh, gonna over. be a there's gonna be a TV yeah. box or or uh uh well uh, you know Sue's um Sue's minivan got demolished in the uh, mm-hmm. so you know I don't know what the Wait. minivan market is out there, but I know <laughs> a double decker is definitely right. a vehicle that the yeah. best friends you, you come in and you just have you just have Eddie Kingston on top of a double decker with like the best friends yeah. and, and Orange Cassidy, and Sue is driving the double decker like <laughs> <laughs> into into the stadium, like oh, or, or they do yeah. it. They do an entrance like outside the stadium. They pull up outside Wembley in the double decker, mm. and then they all have to like climb down the <laughs> the stairs, and then and then it, like there's a procession out of the double decker, and it's just Eddie Kingston's like, what is even going on here? Um, that'd be really funny and fun, and yeah, that's what this match is going to be. Anyway, it has so. to be. Yeah, it has to it be. Will. I feel like that. All right. Well, we've talked. All, we've talked probably more about that match than any other match. There's another insane, uh, kind of call in, call back to all in is what I'm trying to say, uh, and that's a trios match between the cleaner Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, and the Golden Lover uh, t- tag team of Kota Ibushi with them against Bullet Club Jay White. Juice Robinson and Konosuke Takeshita. Um, this has potential to be a banger of a match that steals a lot of the the. I mean, this has the potential to be the the flip flying, jumping around epic match that it could be. Um, how do you see this, uh, Chris? How do you see this match uh, hanging out with uh, with with the kind of old Bullet Club versus new Bullet Club kind of thing? I think this is your right. It's going to be low key. When you really look at the stars that are in this match, you know, you got Bullet Club, you got the Elite, you got Kenny Omega, Hangman. Hangman's obviously my favorite wrestler. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think I think he's I think he's going to have a big match. You know, tonight. I think he's going to shine. Uh, I think the Elite take this one. I think Juice Robinson takes the pin. I think that's what he's he takes a lot of the pins for Bullet Club. But I think it's going to be a really good match. It's going to be one of those. Ones with you got Kenny Omega, Hank. I mean, you're you're talking uh, Jay White, Abusha. So I think this is going to be one of those matches that steals the show. As far yes. as if they can keep these tags clean, I know the tags get a little funky sometimes. Who's legal and who's not? I think if they keep mm. the tags clean in this one, I think it's a really good. It's a good six man. You know, there's not a lot of singles matches on this card, nope. uh, but this this is going to be a good six man. You got your you're featuring some of your biggest stars. Uh, in yep. this match as far as Omega and Hangman, who used to be tag champs. So I think the Elite come away with the win. I think it's a clean okay. win. I think Juice Robinson takes maybe a buckshot lariat. Uh, Hangman gets the pin here, one, two, three. Pat, how do you see that going? Yeah, very, very, very similar to what Chris was saying. I think all six of these guys are very going to be very hungry and very motivated. And even though they'll likely be positioned in a midpoint in the card, they'll suddenly kick the energy right back into gear. So this play, again, the card formation is going to be really important. And this is the case with all AEW pay per views because they're long, so you need to get your match order right. Correct. And yes. I think this will be. This this is this is a good one to have after maybe the the Punk Joe match, where you just pick the pace right back up. Yes. These guys are 
are going to be flipping all over the place. It's going to be one of those chaos six mans that I just I just have a real soft spot for. I'm the same. <laughs> I go for the the Golden Lovers plus Page or the Elite plus Ibushi or however you yes. want to compile these. Three. I, I'm calling the Golden uh, Elite is, is kind of or because yeah, like they're yeah. kind of both an elite. Yeah, uh, with the, Golden yeah, Elite, but, and I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I think you guys nailed it right on the head. Um, the uh, just finally on Wednesday we 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 have this match signed. That is the AEW World's Trios Championship, the acclaimed with a returning daddy ass, or as he said, he's going to be badass Billy Gunn versus the House of Black. Um, Pat, do you think this uh, this is time for a title change, or or uh, or do you have uh, Billy Gunn coming up short, coming back, getting his pop, having his moment, and and ultimately finalizing this is it for him? Ooh, it's tricky. It's a wrestling tradition to go out on your back, isn't it? Um, I mean, House of Black is a faction that I think has been rather underutilized by by AEW. Um, I wish I could see a bit more out of. Do I think they're gonna win? I don't. I I, I don't see them winning. I think I think Daddy Ass and the Acclaimed are gonna. Are going to take this one. I think it's going to be Billy Gunn's moment. I think this is going to be a good match, though. I think this is a. I really like all of these guys. I'm really excited to hear what on earth the uh, the acclaimed are going to come out with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. Uh, that's probably the thing I'm most excited about about this match. Uh, okay. But that that it's going to be a fun one. It's such a. Two very different teams. I think. I think this is going to be a, a big match for the acclaimed to to come out on top for this one. Chris, how do you have it going? Uh, I think the acclaimed win. I think they take the belts here. I think Billy Gunn gets his his belt, his moment uh, as far as getting a belt in AEW because you could easily have a rematch and have them lose to 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 House of Black or whatever. I think this is just for Billy Gunn's moment. I think I think the acclaimed come away with the win in a. In a the acclaimed have had some good good title matches on pay-per-views that i think they're a little mm -hmm. underused right now but when they when they shine they shine on the pay-per-views they i mean the acclaimed versus keith lee and swerve was such an underrated yes. tag match that match was on fire i mean that crowd was lit i think i think the acclaimed pull it off somehow some way i don't exactly know how it gets booked but i think this is billy gunn's moment i don't think he's done yet i think he puts a belt in his waist before he calls it quits so i got the acclaimed win in some way somehow in this one yeah, I, I have the same thoughts. Uh, the, th the one thing I will add is I believe yeah. that um, there will be a stipulation that Daddy Ass will give to his kids. He will say, guys, this is it. The next time we lose, I'm done. Like, mm. this, So let's have a ride. They'll have a one month or two months, yeah. however long in the next pay-per-view or something like that. And, and we'll have you know, a month or of so of being able to come in with that belt around his waist and he gets sure. his, his flowers, he gets his run. And then it's um, maybe house of black uh, finally puts the nail in that coffin a month from now or, or something like that. But That's the, fine. I, I also don't think that the house of black needs the belts. I also don't think the trios championship should exist, but, but if uh, <laughs> it kind of, I think it, yeah. I think it takes away from the tag team division because uh, uh, they okay. seem to focus one or the other. Um, but in this case, you have a team like House of Black that it won't hurt them to lose. You'll no. get the giant pop for for Billy Gunn with a with a huge comeback, and he's the reason they win, um, it, as opposed to being the reason that they've lost. and And they finally get over that hump, and it moves the storyline forward, and it gets it gives you more love and more things. But knowing full well that it's a short it's a short beer on borrowed time and then once it does happen it is yeah. finally over and they do hug it out and the boots are off and everyone's happy we're happy that he's retiring because we got we got to be part of this story for sure i i, I dig that uh two more matches before we go but we don't have to spend a ton of time on these uh sting and darby allen in a coffin match versus swerve strickland and not ar fox uh unfortunately uh because personal reasons and, and things like that um uh versus Christian Cage, who when we were at Dynamite, Chris, when we were sitting right at the hard cam, that dude 
came on off screen, you know, before the TV show and said he was the only champ in Champa Bay. Yeah. Um, do so. you, one, how, this was kind of put together at the last second, unfortunately. Uh, uh, A.R. Fox's, you know, uh, grandmother died and and, and and some personal reasons and things like that. But, I, man, I was looking forward to A.R. Fox getting a moment in the sun. I think that's what his whole run here in AEW is about. But Christian Cage coming in against Sting and Darby Allen. Uh, what are you looking forward to in this match? How do you think this coffin match fits on the card? Um, Pat, I guess we'll start with you. Like, like th this kind of being a coffin match is weird. And, and, and I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this yeah. particular yeah. match. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's that I love Christian Christian's run as a heel has he been oh, killing it. He's killing it. Amazing. He's so good. Now, now is probably not the time for Edge, but we gotta we gotta be on Edge Watch. <laughs> he said yeah. it. He said yeah, it. Yeah, man. He said Woo! it. Not today, <laughs> not today, but we gotta be on Edge Watch from here on out. I think maybe maybe it all out. We might. Oh some man, I I, oh, I haven't brought that up, I, man, because I'm like, oh man, I think oh, that's an epic. That would be an. Yeah, Cause, cause, not today, uh, not today. But now you got me. Now you got me in my. You got me tinglys going. Because uh, <laughs> he owns. I believe the rumor is he owns the rights to his theme song. Oh. Boy. So I think they actually could do the, the 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 altar bridge. Uh, you know. <sighs> Can you, I just I just had it run through my brain right now where it's. Da -dum, da -dum, on this day yeah like ah oh, and everyone's going crazy because <laughs> i was there at wrestlemania 33 in orlando when the hardys uh wow came yeah. in into that uh that ladder match for the and they won the world cha uh tag team champions and it's like i was in that crowd and so like that 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 specific feeling that's the big i mean nigel would be a huge pop Grado would be a huge pop. Edge, Edge, coming over and and that look on Christian's face. But no, so so wait, how would you do it if you were going to book this? Where oh, I don't want to spend a lot of time. I can't. On this, I, like, I can't. I, I can't have Edge come back in this match because this is like not the angle where like you can't have Edge show up like third match into the show. I know. Like, he needs to come out on the main event of All Out or in, you know, or in Dynamite or something. Basically. Yeah. I mean, there could be, I, there could be like a post-match promo. Cause I think like, I mean, Sting, Darby Allen, you kind of like you, I kind of think they're going to win Pat, Chris, you yeah. guys might disagree. Yeah. Uh, I think good guys win that one, but like there is a, there is a world where if you're going to have edge come out, you have, you have Sting or Darby Allen lose. And then Christian Cage with that belt gets to be like, this is the big celebration, you know, but it's a team effort. And I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give a thanks. Cause I think like, I think you, you have Luchasaurus who has just been like a background player. And I think he could cheat. You could just have him choke slam Darby through the coffin, like lid. Yeah. And technically the lids closed, even though he went through yeah. it. And that's how they went. I mean, there's, there's a lot of weird, stupid ways. The finish uh, I have if, if Christian okay. wins is he's in the coffin ready to go. Sting's ready to close it, but Darby wants to coffin drop onto him. And then Christian rolls out the way he coffins himself into the coffin and then they shut the door. But that, I don't know if you can pull that off. I don't know. I like it. How high does he jump off of something in this match, Darby Allen? What's the largest thing he can jump off of at, at Wembley Stadium? Yeah. There's like, there's like, lights that like jut in from the roof of the arena that's how high he could go he would die though so let's not do that. yeah let's not do that let's not do that um um i yeah. could also see sting doing some kind of nod in his entrance to bray wyatt if they were going to do a nod here. we haven't talked about that at all but yeah there's i think there's yeah yeah like if i sting mean comes out with a lantern or something well there was that was there was that Man, there's so many because like during the House of Black entrance, they could do something because of the lights out and the, that would be the most natural. You're going to see the fireflies in the in the in the with yeah. during the House of Black 
uh, entrance and things like that. Um, Chris, who do you have winning sting Darby Allen or swerve and cage? And like, is there anything like, is there anything interesting? We've talked about a couple things, but like what's, what's something that you're might see out of this match. I think, I think sting and Darby take this. I think this is okay. more so stings moment in front of 80,000 people. I think TK is given this moment to sting. I think this is really about him and his final, this might be it for Sting. Maybe another match. Maybe one more after this. We don't know. Um, I think it's just kind of one of those crazy matches. I, honestly, I love Swerve. I think Swerve should be doing something else. I think Swerve's great, great competitor. He puts on some banger matches. I think. Yes. I think he needs to get out of this tag stuff. I think Swerve needs to be moving up here. So, well, I and they he, might be doing that with the AR Fox thing. They might have yeah, given right. him a, a, a singles feud. Yeah, right. I think it's a crazy match. Just one of crazy coffin match. I don't really like the tag team style of a coffin match. I don't know what to expect in this, uh, but I do think Sting and Darby win somehow, some some way. Maybe Christian mm-hmm. rolls into coffin for Darby and takes the. I really know. like Pat's finish. I like that finish a lot. But that big that big ass dinosaur might might be part of it too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because that's what I'm saying is like he he chokes slams me. He says it was a team effort to win, and I gotta give props to the one person that's always been by my side. That's been a team effort to me holding this te- TNT championship in my hand. Give it up for my you know my big guy, the big tall guy that's always been by my side, Adam Copeland. <laughs> yes, that'd be my great. Brother. Okay, last last thing. Uh, uh, in my opinion, the least important card, and it is uh, on the card, and it's in part of the. It's the other match that's on the the zero hour, and that is Hollywood Jack Perry versus Hook for the FTW Championship. Again, I do not know the. I don't know what happened on Collision, so I don't know because technically Hook was gonna or Jack Perry was gonna retire the FTW Championship, right? Um, but right. obviously shenanigans because they already they announced that this match was happening for the championship and then they announced they were going to retire the championship so like obviously there was sometimes AEW does some weird stuff uh uh does, is this the ending of this feud do you think hook just wins wins the championship takes it off of jack perry or um i i mean this is just kind of here i don't know i don't know what this match does on this card i mean it is a pre-show match so cool but but i don't know uh, Chris, uh, talk to me about Jack Perry versus Hook before we get out of here. <laughs> I think Jack Perry wins this. I don't see why he would lose re- lose the FTW Championship to Hook. I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Hook wins and gets a pop. This match is kind of a toss up. I, I would, I would lean towards Perry. I mean, eh, it, not much story <laughs> here to me. I yeah. think they're trying to just build Perry up as a heel. I think that's the goal right now is to get his heel status up there, and yeah. get him some mic work and stuff like that. I mean, two you got two young stars working together here, but. Yeah, just a match to put your two young stars on TV, get them some free TV time, and I think yep. Perry, I think Perry wins. Yeah, I, I, I think the way they do it is that Hook is just beating the ever loving crap out of Jack Perry the whole match. He's throwing him around with the suplexes, he's doing all the things, and then Jack Perry, you know, what a heel, uh, foot on the ropes, <laughs> or he's grabbing the thing. He he, right. he pulls out the win, but it's like. Uh, like he maybe he hits hook, knocks him out with the belt, and then puts the snare trap on him. So he's mm. technically he taps out or whatever, but like in reality, he got he got molly whopped. Um, is there anything? Uh, I, I, yeah, Pat, tell me about this match at all. Do you uh. care about this match at all? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of leading the question here, but man, it's like not really. Uh, I mean, I think when you do retire the FTW championship, let hook. Be the last one to hold it. I think yes. that's got like a nice little story. I don't think yes. that's today on the pre-show. I think that's something you can do on an episode of TV, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it. It'll be a fine match, but I don't think it'll be really a talking point come yeah. tomorrow. There was a there was a slim chance that I was hoping that he would be like Tetsuya Naito and just like like okay i'll carry this belt around but i'm gonna throw it on the ground and i'm gonna kick it around and like i really don't care so much so that it's like it isn't just that belt it's that his it's his dad's legacy it's his what his dad meant i mean i i do like the ftw championship if it was like a uh, what the hardcore cha- not the 24 7 thing but like the ftw rules and ftw whatever and it, it's its own like division where you have guys that do the trash can wrestling and the stuff like that. And, and, and it is the FTW and it's sort of like this legacy of ECW that we wink, wink, nudge, nudge for it. Um, but I also could do without it too. I could just do it mm-hmm. without 
if, if Hook wins it and says, Dad, I restored honor to your name. Here's your belt. You, you know, I want it. I want you to be the guy that uh, – last guy that ever touches it on TV. So – but guys, we've run really long. I might, I might, uh, man. Uh, but those who are into wrestling are this is worth the time, it is worth the talking point because this is literally the largest paid attendance to a wrestling match. Uh, uh I mean, uh, at least in the last hundred years. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there are some old, really old, uh, I guess, uh, ones that if maybe we can say but in the modern era of professional wrestling this is bigger than wrestlemania it is bigger than the old the other wembley uh summer slam show that was done and um it what a, what an exciting time and i'm glad that we got to have pat davenport on to talk about it we learned about you as a person we learned about you as a fan we learned about your family and then we learned uh about uh who you think's gonna win this week. So uh, is there any last thing you want to uh, 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 plug or talk about before we, we wrap up here, Pat? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, just make sure if you want to learn some more about the Rays, uh, be sure to keep it tuned to my articles. Uh, you'll find them <laughs> on rblrsports.com. Let's uh, go. They'll be, they'll be tweeted out as well. Uh, you can follow me at Depressed Rays for all my my musings. I sometimes tweet live as the games are ongoing. Sometimes I do it for the first two innings and I need to go to bed. But yeah, uh, definitely read my articles. Um, they usually go and cover stuff that not everywhere else is is covering about the Rays. So I highly recommend that. And otherwise, thank you so much for having me on, guys. I really yeah, one enjoyed it. one theater suggestion you would make that we we need to watch that uh, that. You got to give us one. Ooh. Uh, ooh, let's say, have you guys seen, you know what? I think it's coming to Broadway. Let's do, let's do six, the musical on Broadway. Uh, it's about the six wives of Henry the eighth and it's done like it's a, like it's a concert. I and love it. Great. I love it. Chris, you already got tickets booked. Yeah, man. That's what I'm doing. Right <laughs> okay. no, that, that's awesome. I love it. Um, well, Zach Dab had the Wicked shirt on the other day. and I yeah. was, oh, I'm going to have to talk like, to him about that. Yeah, I think you guys would definitely get along there. Uh, Mr. Glazier, last words uh, before we we, we before I, I put this double-decker bus into motion and we get out of here, buddy. What a, what a weekend, man. I, I'm so looking forward to this event. Any wrestling fan, you better be tuning in. This is going to be amazing. If you're not a fan of AEW, still tune in. It, it, this weekend is going to roll. This card is going to roll. AEW's really stepped their game up lately with some pay-per-views. Uh, great show here today, guys. Make sure to follow us at RBLR Sports. We're on all platforms of social media. And go vote, baby. Vote for us for number one. Let's go. Guys. What what a wonderful wonderful uh, it's it, it was long Great show. but it was worth it uh, for Pat Davenport for Chris Glazer for soon to be the best of the Bay winning see you guys. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.